uh, hello students another topic of my lecture is the infarction infarction is the actually the ischemic necrosis caused by either occlusion or blood supply of blood supply or venous drainage or both in a particular area is called as infarction and that infarct is an area of ischemic necrosis caused by occlusion of either uh, blood supply or venous drainage. The area is known as that area of ischemic necrosis is known as infarct, and the process is known as infarction. Um, that is a very common and extremely important cause of clinical illnesses like myocardial infarction, cerebral infarction. These are the cause uh, are the cause the cause of more than half of all deaths and ischemic necrosis of the extremities. That is, gangrene is a serious pro problem in the diabetic population. So it's also because of the in, uh, um, infarction or the ischemic necrosis, the gangrene formation actually. Um, the causes of the infarction, uh, number one is the thrombi or emboli in a 99% of cases. The thrombi, which is the clotted mass of blood, or if it is dislodged, that is emboli. So in both of these, uh, both of these are responsible for 99% cases of infarction. Number two is the local spasm of the artery. If there is spasm or constriction of the artery, it will lead to the decreased blood flow to that tissue or area. Leading, would lead to the ischemic necrosis or infarction. Number three is the extrinsic compression of a vessel by tumor. If there is any outgoing tumor, uh, outgoing tumor and compressing the vessel, um, leading to the decreased blood flow or ischemic necrosis and infarction. And fourth one is the traumatic rupture of artery. Um, now let us discuss the types of infarction. The infarction or the in uh, actually the types of infarct the infarct may be white or pale infarct or it may be red or hemorrhagic infarct uh, depending uh, upon the um, organ or uh, uh, the site of occlusion so on the basis of color the classification is white or pale infarct or red or hemorrhagic infarct if it is white or pale in fact it will, it will be due to arterial occlusion in solid organs like heart spleen and kidney if it is red or hemorrhagic in fact it do occur in loose tissues like lung that allow blood to collect in the infarcted zone in tissues with double circulation like lungs and intestine they do have collateral circulation as well so red or hemorrhagic in fact they do occur in the areas where there is a double circulation where blood flow is re-established to a site of previous, previous occlusion after drugs or surgery. So another uh, example, if there is any surgery or done or there is any um, uh, um, uh, drug use, so uh, the um, re-establishment of the blood flow in that area where there was a previous occlusion uh, there occurs the uh, red or hemorrhagic infarcts. In the loose tissues, in the areas where there is double circulation or in the area where there is re-establishment of uh, blood flow. Uh, the red or hemorrhagic infarcts do occur in these areas. So example is the lung, site is the lung. Then the factors influencing the um, formation of these infarcts. Uh, the um, factors the, um, are the nature of vascular supply, rate of development of occlusion, vulnerability to hypoxia and oxygen content of the blood. Actually the consequences of uh, vascular occlusion can range from no or minimal damage to death of the tissue. Uh, depending on upon these factors so the number one that is the nature of the vascular supply the availability of alternative blood supply is the most important factor in determining whether the occlusion of vessel will cause damage or not for example uh, lungs they have dual uh, blood supply pulmonary and bronchial so obstruction of small pulmonary arterioles doesn't cause infarction in healthy individual with an intact bronchial circulation. Um, 
and liver. Uh, this dual hepatic artery and portal vein circulation is also uh, resistant to infarction. It is liver is also having dual blood supply, and uh, in contrast, renal and splenic uh, circulations they are endarterial; they do not have any collateral or dual blood supply. So obstruction of these uh, vessels uh, they will generally cause uh, infarction in kidney and spleen. Second factor is the rate of development of occlusion. Uh, the rate is also very important. If they are slowly, slowly developing occlusion, they are less likely to cause infarction because they provide time for the development of alternative pathways of the flow of collateral circulation. If one coronary artery is occluded slowly, flow within collateral circulation, for example, if one coronary artery is occluded slowly, flow within collateral circulation may increase sufficiently to prevent infarction. Then the third one is the vulnerability to hypoxia. The susceptibility of a tissue to hypoxia influences the likelihood of uh, infarction. For example, neurons undergo irreversible damage when deprived of their blood supply for only three to four minutes because they are vulnerable to hypoxia. They do not tolerate hypoxia for more than three to four minutes. Myocardial cells, they die only after 20 to 30 minutes so while the skeletal muscle they can survive for a longer time so the tissue hypoxia vulnerability to hypoxia is also an important factor in uh, determining the uh, infarction um, if the tissue would be more vulnerable uh, they won't be uh, they would be having um, infarction uh, uh, earlier as compared to those that can tolerate the uh, hypoxia like muscle cells or the cardiac cells that can tolerate up to 20 to 30 minutes. Fourth one is the oxygen content of the blood. The partial pressure of the oxygen in blood also determines the outcome of vascular occlusion. Therefore, even the partial flow obstruction of a small vessel in an anemic or cyanotic patient may lead to tissue infarction. In anemic or cyanotic patient, they have decreased partial pressure of excision. So when they have the lesser oxygen content of the blood, and any small artery in these patients is included, it will lead to the infarction. So these four factors are very much important. Again, summarizing uh, the nature of vascular supply, uh, it, is, it is having dual blood supply or not. Those areas having dual blood supply, like lungs, liver, they may uh, resist the infarction, while as compared to those uh, that are having endarterial supply. Then the rate of development of occlusion, uh, slowly developing uh, occlusion, they may give time uh, for the development of collaterals. So they uh, may have uh, lesser chances of uh, infarction as compared to those that are developing quickly or fastly. Then the vulnerability to hypoxia, if the tissue is vulnerable to hypoxia or is unable to tolerate hypoxia, for a longer time, they would be having infarction earlier as compared to those that are able to tolerate the, uh, or those uh, uh, that are not vulnerable to hypoxia like muscle tissue, etc. And then the oxygen content of the blood, lesser content of the oxygen in the blood, like in anemic and cyanotic patients, even the smaller arterial occlusion may lead to the infarction. Uh, these are the causes of the infarction already explained in types white or pale or red or hemorrhagic white one occurring in the arterial uh, uh, causing the due to arterial occlusion in solid organs and the red one loose tissues uh, in the areas where there is double circulation or where there is a re-establishment of previously occluded uh, vessels Please like, comment, share it with your friends and do subscribe my channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.